It's not every day that we see indie films that are big hits here in Korea. Some say it's simply because they have lower profiles than blockbusters, but others point out that it's because they face unfair distribution challenges. Our film critic Pierce Conran joins us today to tell us more. Good afternoon, Pierce. Good afternoon. So let's start with where we are now. How are Korea's uh, indie films faring these days? Well, I suppose you can look at that coin on two sides. On the one, on the one hand, uh, from a quality perspective, it's doing very well. Mm -hmm. Lots of great films are, are being made. A lot of new voices are coming up that are exploring a lot of interesting social subjects. And these films are doing quite well on the international festival circuit. But from, uh, from a business perspective, uh, it's quite different. Uh, these uh, films are struggling at the box office. And there are a lot of um, people worried that these kind of monopolistic practices from mm -hmm. the main studios, which is kind of this vertically uh, integrated uh, industry, is uh, causing uh, creative, creating massive obstacles for uh, indie fair. Mm -hmm. So that's the reality that uh, Korea's indie filmmakers are facing these days. But before we delve uh, deeper into that topic, let's first talk about some of the movies that uh, we can look forward to. Absolutely. Well, well, the first one actually is one that came out uh, yesterday. It's called A Matter of Interpretation. It's one of my favorite films uh, from last year. I saw it at the Busan International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And it's from director Lee Gwang Guk. It's his second film. He was a former assistant director for Hong Sang Soo. His first one was Romance Joe, another wonderful film. Um, it deals with an actress who suddenly walks out of rehearsal one day and uh, she ends up on a bench and she starts talking to a, uh, an, an off duty detective and they talk about kind of their dreams. Mm -hmm. And the movie kind of revolves around three characters. It kind of jumps through space and time and, and kind of deals with a lot of this kind of a dream logic and while that might, might seem a little complicated it's actually just a really fun film uh, you know and it's uh, it kind of tickles the brain as well but uh, it's a real treat and I highly recommend people to seek it out hmm. so the main actress I don't think I recognize her but I recognize Yoo Jun Sang yes yeah you are Shishin Dong Mi is in it uh, she's been in quite a few things but uh, but she's maybe not that well known Yoo Jun Sang of course is a well-known mm -hmm. name all right so I know you didn't come with just one film so what else do you have for us sure well later this month on the 26th there will be a pair of interesting uh, films coming out. One of them is Gihua, which is actually a quite a small little indie. Um, it's having its, uh, it hasn't screened at a festival or anything. Mm. And um, it's, about, um, it's about a father who tries to reconnect with his son who has just been released from jail. And so it's kind of a road, uh, road trip kind of family uh, drama comedy. And uh, it's, it's quite good, but honestly, the one film to really look out for is called The Avian Kind, another one of my absolute favorites from Avian last year. Kind, huh. Yeah, it was uh, it's from, it's from the Jeonju Film Festival last year. In fact, it was also a film that was commissioned by the festival. So um, this is from director Shin Yong Chik. He's made a few other films like the Russian novel and Rough Play. Um, and this film, it's a beautiful mystery that takes place mostly in the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's about a man who goes searching for his wife who's been missing for 15 years. Wow. And she left to go uh, to become a bird, of all things. And that's, uh, again, that sounds quite strange, but uh, within the kind of the the unique poetry of the film it makes complete sense. And so it's a beautiful film with uh, great performances and really terrific, uh, terrific uh, cinematography and uh, an another must for film fans. Mm -hmm. So many uh, film festivals are major sites for some of the indie films to screen. So we know that the Berlin Film Festival is, is currently underway, although it's more towards the end now. Mm -hmm. So any uh, Korean films screening there this Absolutely. year? Absolutely. As, uh, as with every year, there's always a good number of Korean films in Berlin. And this year, the most prominent one is actually Ode to My Father, oh, which a massive film. blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit of a surprise that they had it there. But beyond that, there's also there's the film End of Winter, another film from Busan, which is actually a graduate feature from the Danguk University. Um, it's, a, it's a very understated family drama, um, and it's really kind of a sign of a, of, a, of a good director in the future. So that was screening in the forum section, and that's really um, quite good. We also have uh, the documentary on, on Omnivorous Family's Dilemma, mm -hmm. which deals with uh, a woman who kind of uh, grapples with her own, um, she's becoming a vegetarian and is uh, trying to kind of uh, get her family to be interested in that as well. She's huh. kind of, it's a very personal documentary that premiered at Jeonju last year. Then there's the very experimental film Cancelled Faces, which is actually from a um, Israeli director and it's a, it's a German Korean co-production but shot in Korea. And uh, then perhaps the, the big one is uh, Revivre, which is the 102nd film by the legendary filmmaker in Contact. Mm -hmm. And this film is already screened extensively, right. but it has yet to find a Korean release, but I'm sure that'll come soon. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about a couple of, or several films. Do you have any more? Or? Um, yes, upcoming films. We have next month, we have Social Phobia, from the, another graduate film from the Korean Academy of Film Arts this time. A very interesting film about kind of 
the Youth's Nonline Communication. I was quite a fan of it. Mm. And one that I really, really like, though we don't know when it'll come out, is uh, A Midsummer Night's, uh, uh, Midsummer's Fantasia, which is from Jean Conge, a filmmaker who I think is absolutely terrific. And that was also a Busan film. You hear a lot about Busan, of course, talking about Korean indies. And one other film I'm quite looking forward to is Madonna, the new film by Shin Su Won, who is the um, director of Pluto. So that's another film we don't know when that'll appear, but mm. we'll be, I'll be looking forward to it. For some reason, it sounds familiar, Madonna. I think I feel like uh, we've talked about it before. But maybe mm. I'm not. I'm, I'm being not. wrong here. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not sure. It's quite possible. It's certainly it's something that's been on my radar. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something to look out for. Okay. So let's go back to the issue of uh, this uh, dis distribution challenges that the indie filmmakers mm. in Korea are facing. What do you have? What's your view on this issue? Well, this is something that kind of um, does kind of upset me quite a bit. Uh, what we have in Korea is a system called vertical integration. And what that means is that companies op uh, control both the production uh, or sorry, the production distribution and the exhibition of their films. Mm. So they have this kind of monopolistic, kind of um, uh, integrated uh, system, as it were. This is something that uh, used to happen in, uh, in Hollywood, but it was abolished in uh, the 1940s after something called the Production Code came, came into place. And so these, the main kind of uh, culprits, if you will, are CJ Entertainment, which mm -hmm. also operates CJ, CCGV Cinemas, CGV, yes. and then Latte Entertainment, Latte Cinemas. Mm -hmm. um, and both of those companies were actually fined for monopolistic practices last year and which is to say that they kind of give unfair advantages to their own films at very positive screening times and so other competitors are either kind of relegated to you know like early morning or very late nights uh, mm -hmm. or not really screened at all and of course uh, indie films are completely absent and uh, so you know CJ was very impressive last year they had Roaring Currents and Ode to My Father which are now the two most successful Korean films of all time mm -hmm. But of course, they were, you know, screened favorably at uh, all these theaters, and for weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, even now, oh, to my father, you know, two months into its run, it still has some very, very, very good showing times. Right. So it's uh, there's definitely an unfair advantage going on there. Right. I mean, I've I've heard some people say that oh, to my father, it does have the quality to back it up, but. Roaring Currents last year was a bit of there. There, there was a bit of a controversy there as to whether it deserved that much, uh, that many audience. But um, yes, it's something that's been tackled many, many times in the past. The major conglomerates are fine, but then we don't really have anything or any solution to that problem. But um, I guess we will uh, see, wait and see what other actions will be taken sure. in the it's, future. It's an ongoing issue. Right. And, uh, we'll see how it goes in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Pierce, for coming in today and sharing your uh, insights. My pleasure as always.